Can solar technology fuel modern life? For this video series, American Experience is traveling to three different climate zones across the United States to find out how and why people live off the grid. A 25-acre homestead in New Mexico. Being here in the middle of nowhere, it gives you a feeling of freedom. A one-bedroom cabin in Minnesota. For me, it was about being as self-sufficient as we can. And an off-grid, family-run farm in northeastern Vermont. We just hope to move the world in a better direction. My name is Zani. I'm Yasin. I'm Kari. We moved out here in June of 2020. We got a truck. We purchased this 26 foot travel trailer and uh, we loaded it up with everything we could. And it took us about a month to get here from Atlanta. I had been planning to go off grid for more than 10 years. I was doing a ton of research. And then when the pandemic hit, we just came out here on an adventure and I loved it. I felt like I was home. So many people think that living off-grid means you have absolutely no technology, you're living like a caveman, and you're running from the government. We still pay income taxes, um, and people will say, you have a cell phone, you're not off-grid. And we're like, that's not what off-grid means. <laughs> you know, it just means you're supplying your own utilities. We're rewriting the book for this mm -hmm. modern style living in an off-grid setting. Mm -hmm. You know, because here we still have high-speed internet, we've got electric. We have a very nice two-bedroom trailer with a regular bathroom, hot water, a regular shower. We have a full kitchen. You can still be off-grid and have comfort and amenities and luxury. There's an illusion of what you should be doing, how you should be doing it, and the path that you should take in life. And I think as a society, we have gotten away from the basic principles and reasons for life. Growing your own food, of raising your own animals, of taking care of yourself. And we really need to get back to that. That's the whole purpose of doing this, is to have more time freedom. Which is the most valuable thing that you could ever have in your life. The way that we get our electricity starts from the sun. Um, we have 18 solar panels. So you got nine, you got nine on this side and nine on the other side. That collects the energy from the sun and it goes through an, a, a system that will change it from AC to DC and then we'll also store most of that energy for the day in our battery bank. In the summer, when you have longer days, um, it'll store up to 12 to 24 hours. It just depends on how much you've used throughout the day. Having kids is a big factor in off-grid living because you have to think about their well-being, their social well-being, um, their physical well-being, and you have to keep them entertained. <laughs> We got him a trampoline, we got him a bow and arrow, we got him a BB gun, we had the ATVs. I was really excited when she said we were moving here, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> homeschooling has been really easy because we use an online homeschooling program. Kari learns so much. He learns uh, mechanical things and plumbing and carpentry and animal husbandry. Just so many things out here that he wouldn't have learned in the city. So some people move off grid and it doesn't work out. Mostly I think because they weren't financially prepared. And if you go off grid without the money you need to do your infrastructure, it is very uncomfortable and it can be dangerous. So it's best to prioritize, to make a plan and take it slowly. Yeah, it makes plans and schedules. Because yeah, it's, it's a constant project. Starting from scratch, you're doing everything, and it takes time, it takes money, it takes labor. The only thing I miss about our on-grid life is my friends and family. 
Anything else? Oh, the beauty supply store. <laughs> I miss the beauty supply store. Do you miss anything? Me? No. I don't. This is home. This is where I belong. Of course, we want to have a low carbon footprint, and we just want to be able to grow our own food and supply everything that we need ourselves. The thing that keeps me inspired is just seeing what this place is going to end up being like <laughs> in five years once we build the house, once we have a food forest going, once we have our greenhouses really running year round, mm -hmm. once we have more animals. It's exciting to think about what we could do and the fact that we've taken this bare canvas and we're turning it into a beautiful masterpiece. I actually own this place. You know, and that's an awesome feeling. Yeah. Right, because we'll still look at each other and be like, babe, can you believe we did this? We are living our dream life. <laughs>